welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel and the Nostalgic Runner, and we are back again for another episode of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. This is season five, and this is episode five, and this is called um, Whitney Drew and Her Clues. And the title is very deceiving. You would think Whitney's in this episode a lot. She is in there a little bit, but not as much as you would think. Um, yeah, and Salt Lake is heating up. Salt Lake is heating up and it is honestly the best. It's the best of all the Housewife shows, hands down. I, I can't even pretend it's not. It easily is. And man, Bronwyn and honestly, Mary J. Cosby, they are carrying this show. Because Mary in this episode, ooh, she got activated and she's becoming the people's champ. I ain't going to hold you. She is becoming the people's champ and it has everything to do with her calling Heather out and all of her BS and I am personally here for it. Someone needs to. And the preview for the next episode, child, looks even crazier. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the episode. And before we get into the episode, yeah, okay. I've already said this before last week, but I am going to just, for those who are new, I some a lot of times I do try to be on camera when I do these reviews, but because there are so many housewife shows, um, I've been trying to find a way to be able to do these quickly. And hello, Honestly, the best way and kind of the easiest way for me to make sure I get the reviews on time is not to film a um, video every day. Um, just to, because it takes a lot to set up, edit the video and all those other things. Versus if I'm just talking and, you know, I just put the pictures of what scene I'm talking about. A lot easier, quicker to edit and just easier for me to get it out. So yeah. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the episode. Um, so the, it starts off where the ladies are back, um, from their trip and they're all in Utah and we do see a little bit of a housewives montage where you see, um, Lisa, um, trying to feed her son, Henry and, and Henry's a younger son and he's just playing video games. And you would think that this housewives montage, cause normally housewives montage doesn't mean anything, but this one's actually kind of significant. It, it comes back later on in the episode. And then we only get one appearance this episode with Meredith. And Meredith is with her um, rabbi, um, Ruth, practicing singing Hebrew prayer. And that's all that you see of her the whole entire episode. So there's really no, this, that was it. And then we do have our first um, full scene. And this scene is super heavy. And this is the other reason why I will say Bronwyn is carrying this season because her personal story is, man, this is, this is a lot. Um, but anyway, let's get into that. In a weird turn of events, we do see Bronwyn and Lisa, they meet up for a spa day. Um, and we find out at the airport, um, Lisa kind of shook Bronwyn to her core, not trying to. And what basically took place, they show the, they show the unseen footage where um, Lisa basically makes a comment that Gwen, um, who is Bronwyn's daughter, looks just like her. And she's like, no, she doesn't. She looks like, you know, her dad. And then she shows a picture of her dad to Lisa. And it turns out that Lisa knows or knew the dad and his family. And this, of course, this startles Bronwyn and Bron was not ready to, um, you know, really receive that. And this, and this is where we find out why. So, um, basically we, earlier on, we found out that Bronwyn, you know, got pregnant with her daughter when she was in college and she got kicked out of college because you went to like a, a Mormon college, BYU. And, um, basically once she did you know, get pregnant and she went to go tell the dad along with the dad's family, they were not having it. They basically long story, less long said that she was completely on her own and they really wanted her to give it up for adoption and be done with it, which is really kind of messed up. 
And um, so after that, they basically never had anything to do with Bronwyn or her daughter. And then um, when Bronwyn, well, 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 actually, sorry, when Gwen was two years old, Bronwyn finds out via Facebook that um, the dad passed away. Um, and so basically Gwen will never get the opportunity to meet her dad, like ever. And also, I guess it's kind of common for, you know, families to act this way in the Mormon community. Um, they basically treated <laughs> Bronwyn like sh she was the one who was completely at fault of this pregnancy as if like, you know, it doesn't take two to tangle. And, um, apparently the parents were like from, and, and including the father was from this small town, very Mormon. And as a result, you know, there's issues with that, but then also too, keep in mind, Bronwyn is also raised, you know, Mormon too. Like, and so she also, her own family didn't really accept it very well either. So basically Bronwyn kind of was on her own for a little bit on handling this situation. And she still had the maturity and wherewithal to do what was best for her and her daughter, which was keep her daughter and take care of her daughter and, and make a life. And, um, Bronwyn, it seems like Br Bronwyn and her dad are good, but her Bronwyn and her mom are still not good as a result of the whole entire situation. And it's very heavy. And as she's talking to Lisa about it, Lisa's getting emotional and Lisa, from her perspective, she only knows of the family being nothing but great, nothing but nice. And so she doesn't know about all this other aspect of it. And that's great and all, you know, there are plenty of people that on paper, they're nice, but they're also pieces of ish in the same time. And so Bronwyn has this decision now where she's like, I'm going to talk to Gwen and tell her everything that happened and, you know, and have her make the decision on what she wants to do. Because Lisa does then state to Bronwyn that the family, um, particularly um, the grandmother does want to meet Bronwyn and says it is time. And so Bronwyn feels she's open to it for Gwen's sake, but she doesn't really, it's all painful for her because she just doesn't trust it. And honestly, I kind of agree with Bronwyn. I don't trust it either. Um, this will come up later on where we talk about it more. It, it just doesn't seem like this is the right intentions of why now, you know, because at this point, side note, I mean, just in case we didn't talk about it before, Gwen's 18. They literally had 18 years to get it together and they never did. And it just seems very suspicious to me that they wait until they're on this TV show to want to do it. I don't trust it at all. And, um, yeah, anyway, this was a very, very heavy opening scene. And um, then we, we do switch gears after this, though. So next we have Whitney, Heather, and Brittany. They're going, um, you know, skiing and snowboarding together. And um, I just love that Whitney. Whitney's an amazing snowboarder. She looks like she'd be killing it. Um, but anyway, so then from there... Um, they are done doing that, and Brittany is still talking about the Jarrett situation. She does want to get close. Like, so we find out as soon as um, Brittany got back, Jarrett sent like all these flowers and gifts to her, and um, basically have wrote a letter. And so now Brittany is, of course, backtracking as we knew she would. And, um, she's going, she wants to have this closure dinner with, um, Jared. And now she's also blaming Lisa for basically helping her have a backbone. And this, and honestly, and this is one of those few cases I actually completely agree with Lisa because girl, uh, <laughs> if it wasn't for Lisa, Brittany would just keep doing the same crap over and over again. And anyway, so. Brittany's now saying in her delusional mind that Lisa's too invested in her relationship when 
in all reality, none of them would know about this relationship if it wasn't for her bringing all of us into the chat. So anyway, from there, Whitney also states that she's also mad at Lisa because she found out from the um, hotel staff that Lisa tossed Whitney's gift because Whitney in the last episode gave everyone um, jury, um, you know, as a gift and she tossed it in the trash. And honestly, I kind of have mixed emotions and feelings about this because I'm like, girl, you know, you and Lisa are not cool. So why are you surprised? But anyway, Whitney just feels personally hurt by that. And then um, we also then find out where um Whitney because Whitney was kind of also upset with Lisa like I don't understand why she has so much vitriol on this trip when really I was talking to Meredith about you know how she was treating my business and we find out from Heather that is actually um you know it was actually um Lisa that told Meredith the rumor about the business and so now Whitney thinks that Lisa's behind it all. And then this is where we kind of get the name of the um, episode. So it doesn't end there, but that's where it starts off, starts off at. Next, we have a little bit of a short scene um, before we move on from this short scene. Well, Mary is talking to her son, Robert Jr. And... She is alluding that Robert Jr. has a problem. Um, she doesn't go into it yet, but she definitely alludes to it. And she also states that, you know, because she, she was asking a lot of questions because first she asked him, like, have you ate yet? And he looks completely out of it, you know, for obvious reasons, because he probably is out of it. And he says that he hasn't. And then she's like, well, I'm about to go, to, you know, to dance classes and to a dance class and um robert asked for money and then she's like asking what is this money being used for you know, for the right reasons you know you can't just be doing whatever you're doing and in her confessional she does state that she really does want um robert to make something of himself to get a job basically get his life together but she doesn't trust him to do that right now because he's a hot mess like he would never be able to keep a job in his condition. And, you know, we'll get into that later on, I'm sure, in the season. But I do like that we are starting to see. Um, she's, she's basically slow walking us into what's going on. Um, and I do think that she actually is going to tell us what's going on. Because this version of Mary has been the most open, the most free. She really does seem like she's really, really happy with who she is as a person. And honestly, if Mary would start off like this from the beginning, child, I think, I don't know. I think honestly, Mary's just, Mary's just interesting. I, she's such an interesting case. And this version of her has been the best, best version of her yet. But anyway, from there, then we do see, um, that, um, Angie then comes to pick her up, <laughs> um, to go to a dance class. So she's going to the dance class with Angie for exercise. And then at the dance class, she actually see Heather's daughter, Georgia, there. And um, so while this is happening, this is a dual scene, by the way, we see that Heather is actually meeting with Lisa um, at the Salt Cave, which side note, I really want to check out Salt Cave. I kind of went, as soon as I saw this, I kind of Googled, Googled it to see what the benefits are. Cause I think I might treat myself to a spa day this weekend, but anyway, um, <laughs> neither here nor there. That's just totally a side note. But then, um, back at the dance class, we, um, Angie and uh, Mary are recapping the trip. And then Angie's basically just venting to her about how she feels about how Lisa, um, kind of, kind of, you know, took it too far by complaining about how, Angie uses her daughter as an excuse to get off the phone with her. And Angie explains what I kind of thought it was is that Lisa really wants people to like cater to her and take up all of her time. So, and cause she was like, I will be starting talking, talking to Lisa in the morning. And then about time I get off the phone with her is dinner time. And I'm just like, wow. 
And I believe it because Lisa does seem like she's someone who, who just overly enjoys hearing herself talk and is very self-absorbed. So I'm not that surprised. And then um, she also, Angie also does state that she feels hurt though that when she was talking to Heather about it, Heather is blaming Angie for this because, well, for one, Heather's a pick me. Um, and then over <laughs> back with um, Lisa and Heather speaking up, Lisa is of course, I mean, Heather is completely team Lisa and is just very much like Lisa, just kissing Lisa's behind. Because what we know is, what we definitely know is that from day one, and um, I don't know, I don't understand this, but basically Heather has kind of viewed Lisa as like the popular girl. I mean, like this kind of residual high school crap. And she basically has been pining to get in like good with Lisa from day one. And we could see so far this season, anyone that has the, who could even potentially be close to Lisa, I've known she's been sabotaging it. Like with Bronwyn, she tried it with Bronwyn and she, she found out that she ain't gonna be able to do that. And then she tried it um, well, and but she is succeeding with Angie. And later on, child the way Mary, Mary gets her together and I love it. But anyway, um, I, I don't want to skip ahead. I do not want to skip ahead. But anyway, so then Heather takes upon herself to tell her every, tell Lisa everything that Angie said, because Angie was just venting about how hurt she is. And she's like, look, I attend to my daughter. The way I handle my daughter is different from you. I'm not going to like let her, let her play video games all night. This is this and this. And just kind of venting to Angie, not venting to Heather and confidence. And basically, Heather told Lisa everything. And now, of course, they're not good. They're not going to be good at all. And Lisa is legitimately pissed, as she should be, because she, um, you know, is aware now that what Angie said. But at the same time, Heather, I'm speaking directly to you. Why did you feel the need to do that? In her confessional, she says some BS that I don't believe. I'm not even going to repeat it because Heather is just full of, full of it. And she's like, yeah, I just felt like I needed to tell her this because it was really, really messed up. You didn't tell her that because you were concerned. You did not. I don't feel like you did. I feel like you did that just to be messy. And honestly, the way, and I didn't even think of it until towards the end of the episode, when Mary read you your rights of why that was kind of messed up, child, I was like, damn, Mary be reading like she reads the Bible. I mean, <laughs> but anyway, again, I'm sorry I'm skipping ahead, but for those, if you're not watching this show, watch the show. It's so good. But anyway, moving on. So next we have Whitney. She's with um, her husband and her daughter. And she takes her daughter to so soccer practice. But before that, her daughter is like asking for like another like piercing in her ears. And um, it's kind of cute because like, you know, um, Whitney's like, I don't want to give her that yet um, because I want to hang on to her childhood. And her daughter's 14. But the funny thing is when I was 14, I had this, I had, um, four piercings in my ears. Like I had one, I had one on each ear. Um, that, well, I had one each year when I was little, but then, and I think it was actually fourth grade is when I got my second piercing. So I had, um, two holes in each ear, um, when I was, um, in, I think fourth grade. And then I'm trying to remember, I think in high school is when I got the third piercing. So I used to have three piercings in my ears and I don't think I have the three anymore. I mean, I feel like I could, but I haven't worn them. I don't wear enough earrings like that. I only wear the earrings in the primary ear at this point in my life. But yeah, anyway, I kind of just, it just reminded me of that. It was kind of cute. But anyway, um, so then Whitney gets a call from Adam, who is her podcaster friend. Um, and when she said Adam, I was trying to, think was this like uh up and adam adam 
I'm wondering. I, I'm going to look. You, child, I think it is up in Adam, Adam. I wasn't sure what Adam it was. But anyway, it, it basically said Adam podcast friend. And so Adam found out who is running the account. Um, and the account that I'm talking about is the account that put the side by side picture of like her, um, necklace and the Alibaba necklace and trying to say that, you know, her jury's coming from Alibaba. And, um, so then Adam's basically trying to figure out who is it who fed that information to this website. And, um, Basically, the resource or whoever she was talking to, um, or who he he was talking to, basically, um, she they didn't give a name. So, like, basically, Whitney's like, so basically, they had to guess. So, Whitney guessed, um, because the the hints were based upon, the, um, basically, sorry, sorry, sorry. I know I'm stumbling on my words here. I'm, I'm kind of tired, but um, so Adam has Whitney guess by um kind of like he kind of feeds questions so like the first question is do they own a jewelry line the answer is no um do they own like a beauty line the answer is no and then the third one was like do they own the liquor line it's like yes and the only person that owns a liquor line is lisa so according to adam lisa is the one who did who fed this information and now um, Whitney has a, has a battery in her back. Um, now whether we believe this or not, I do have questions on it because it seems very convenient and I don't understand. I don't get it. it. It seems like it's been, it, feel, it seems like this is manufactured drama. I ain't gonna hold you. I don't believe Whitney's. I never really believe Whitney's storylines all the way. It seems very manufactured. So and it seems like it's just overly time consuming. I don't see Lisa doing all of this because what would stop Whitney from doing just fe feeding this to this site herself? I mean, I know it's bad publicity and wouldn't be good for her business, but like, I don't know. And people in the comments put it out there. Are people really buying from prism? I, I mean, is, and is it a legitimate business when it comes to these housewives? I just never know. Um, and I'm not invested enough to really investigate myself either. Let's, let's, let's just be real. But anyway, that is where this kind of ends here. Oh my gosh. So next we have Brittany, <laughs> who I'm still trying to figure out why she not a full-time housewife. Maybe because her only storyline is the Jared situation. But speaking of the devil, she actually meets with Jared. So we see Jared on TV and basically we see jared in action be manipulative talking like a politician and Brittany seems like she's getting the strength to leave this man alone um but then at the same time she her and her goofy self is mad that lisa intervened the way she did because she is still pick me um but yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I, <laughs> all I put in this thing is that this is very cringe. The whole thing was cringe. He definitely was being manipulative. He never did give her what she wanted. They are not in a relationship. It seems like when she was talking to him though, she seems like she seems to be not as ditzy as she comes off when she's talking to the ladies. But the fact that she even went and met with him still, it, I don't get it. it. It's weird. Um, but anyway, so it was a short scene and we'll see if she ends up with Jared or not again. I don't think we're going to know about it again because it comes up later on. Um, and anyway, we, we may not ever find out. This might be the end of us talking about it after this episode. I hope so anyway. Okay, next we do have another serious scene and this is Bronwyn talking to Gwen about everything that I mentioned earlier on. And so Bronwyn did, you could tell Bronwyn has a very, very close relationship with her daughter for obvious reasons. And so basically we find out that Bronwyn told her daughter and then she kind of 
you know, had, gave to her daughter her space to kind of figure out on her own and even gave um, Gwen her, the opportunity to talk to her grandma to see if she wants to still meet up with her or not. And Gwen did talk to the grandma and she didn't trust it. Um, she still, parts of her still wants to meet the family because it's the only way she's going to have any connection when it comes to her dad. But other than that, um, she basically states that, and this is kind of manipulative, honestly, that I got manipulation of this because when she talked to her grandmother, her grandma was like, yeah, I, I just want you to be fully ready to meet us when you're ready. Making it sound like, I don't know, to me, it came off and it, it, it's alluding, it feels like. That grandma is trying to make it sound like that her, um, Bronwyn kept Gwen away. I feel like that is where she's trying to, she, it's the way she said that it came off that way, even though at least according to what I'm watching, that's definitely not the case, but who knows the truth? I mean, we only know, you know, what's, we only really know Bronwyn's side. Um, based off of this show. So honest, the way it kind of ended though, is we still don't know if Gwen is going to meet um, the grandma or not. I personally think she shouldn't because I really do not. I don't think the intentions are pure. And Gwen um, also her first impression was the same. And her first instinct was that. And honestly, I think she should go off her first instinct. And Bronwyn is just eating up inside because she's like, you know, out of everyone, I made choices for Gwen. And Gwen's the only one that didn't make any choices. Like, she's just dealing with everyone else's decisions. And this is really, really her meeting this, the grandma is the only decision that she can make that as her own and but i don't think this is going to give gwen the closure that she's looking for because it just doesn't seem pure because she had again the the grandma had 18 years to do this like they had the time to do it and they never did do this and honestly i just could never imagine doing that to someone i think it's just all the way wrong I don't care how good of a Mormon you are. It's just, it's very messed up. But anyway, this was kind of sad to see. And this is kind of where it ended. Um, hopefully we do get some resolve on whether she does end up being her grandma or not. Again, I don't think she should, but anyway. Okay. And then the final scene that I was not expecting was that um, Heather decided to invite some of the ladies to go zip lining. So she invited Lisa, Brittany, and Mary. And um, first they go in this like, like do buggy thing and get really, really muddy. And almost all the, I mean, and they all got muddy, but Mary was cracking me up at this moment. Cause she's like, why did I wear white? She's like, well, at least I don't have like the mud in my mouth and in my teeth, like I'm um, Heather, which by the way, Heather did. And she never did clean it up. They were outside and she never did clean up any of the things, which makes no sense to me. You have food and all this stuff to do like a tailgating thing afterwards, which also means you probably have some wet wipes and stuff like that, but you're not going to clean your face. It's weird. But anyway, this is not the only time where I criticize Heather or this episode, clearly. And anyway, but then we do see all the ladies zip line because they wear like these, um, they all wear a GoPro and we find out that actually Mary loves zip lining. Mary's like, I go zip lining all the time. It's so freeing. It's so amazing. It is literally my favorite thing to do. I was like, wait, what? She's like, yeah, I love zip lining. She's like, I've done it in Jamaica. I've done it. In, I think she said like, I'm um, Costa Rica. She's like, every time I get the opportunity to zip line, I zip line. So that's because when she did it, she looked like, she looked like a natural. She was like having her a blast. And I just met Mary J. Cosby. <laughs> and for those who don't know, I call her Mary J. Cosby, like Mary J. Blige and bear with me. 
Um, <laughs> um, I'm, that might change depending on how things are with, you know, other situations. But I call her that because, yeah. But anyway. So, every single episode, though, Mary surprises me. And she... She continues to do it, but it's always a pleasant surprise. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so anyway, from there, then we do have the lady sitting down and um, Heather gives Brittany like a unicorn because we find out. And then this is where like she, um, Brittany shares like, yeah, Jared sent me all this stuff. And then I met him for like a closure, like dinner situation. And the ladies are all surprised. Like, wait, what, why would you do that? And, um, really Lisa was the one who was saying, why would, why would you do that? And <laughs> at this moment, Mary, this whole entire time was me. Mary, when it comes to, the, and when it comes to the whole thing that is Brittany, Mary and I, we are here. We're, we're the same person. We're just like, oh my God, this lady was wrong with her. But anyway, so they, so she basically described what happened, um, Brittany. And then she then all of a sudden just turns like on Lisa and is like, you know what? And I blame you. And so, and Lisa's like, wait, what? I was trying to help you out because also I forgot to mention during the dinner, we find out that Jared felt away because, well, things changed where Lisa ended up FaceTiming um, Jared because she basically took, um, Lisa took um, Brittany's phone, FaceTimed Jared, and basically put her foot down for Brittany because Brittany wasn't going to do it. And apparently, I guess she said some mean things to Jared. I don't think it was mean. I think it was, she was basically, you know, standing her ground for Brittany because Brittany wasn't going to do it. And, um, Jared is just being manipulative. Um, and so, but Brittany's like, I don't know why you did this. I want you to stay out of my relationship. You're just way too invested. And then both Brittany. So, and then both, um, <laughs> Lisa and really Mary summed it all up. She was like, we wouldn't be in your relationship if it wasn't for you. Take us out of the freaking chat. And then Brittany, like, is super finished. Like, hey, I'll take you. I'll take you. Out. Fine, I'll take you out. And then <laughs> Lisa's like, me too. And then Heather's like, me three. I don't want anything to do with it. And so <laughs> from there, hopefully that's all we hear about it. Because child, none of them want to hear about it anymore. And so there's that on that. And then from there, from there are transitions where, um, you know, Heather's like, yeah. Um, so my daughter said that she saw you at the dance class. I mean, so that she saw you. Um, at and at first, like, she didn't say dance class right now. She was like, yeah, my daughter says she saw you. And then the ladies asked, where did Mary run into Georgia? And she's like, yeah, we just ran, ran to the wind bras together. Like, basically... Mary's being very coy because I think Mary was actually trying to avoid the drama. I mean, honestly, I think that's what it was because we know why she didn't want to say it right away. And then she did then eventually. And then instead of her saying anything, Heather's like, yeah, you, you saw her at dance class, right? You saw her at dance class. And Mary's like, yeah, yeah, I saw her at dance class. And then eventually Mary does state like, yeah, I was at dance class with Angie. Um, at first she was like, I'm, I, you know, I went to dance class to work out, which is what it was. They went to dance class to work out. And, um, from here, Mary's like, okay, if we're going to get into the stuffs, we're going to get into the stuffs. And so, yeah, she's like, cause then after she said she was there with Angie, Lisa's like, yeah, I haven't talked to Angie since Milwaukee. And Mary's like, why is that? And why haven't you talked? And like, Mary is trying to get to the bottom of what the issue is between Lisa and Angie. And one thing that Mary noticed right away, Heather was chiming in way more than she should be when it comes to the whole entire situation. Because one thing that um, she found out from Mary, I mean, that Mary found out was that according to Lisa, 
Angie was talking about her parenting. And Mary's like, where did you hear that from? She's like, well, um, Heather said that. It's like, well, shouldn't you talk to the source of the person that said that? And then Mary, well, then, and then um, Lisa's like, well, you know, Angie could reach out to me. And then that's when Mary's like, you know, I find it weird, Heather, that you have such a strong stance on Lisa's side of things, but yet you have known Angie way longer. What is that about? And <laughs> I love it because at this moment, why was why was Heather like literally stuttering? She had no words. And then Ange, and then after that, then like Mary's like, you know, I find that, you know, your behavior is very two-faced. You're on this side and then you're on this side. Why is that? Why are you all in the business? And I was <laughs> and yeah, Mary almost got her together and she had no answer. And then uh unfortunately it Heather deflected at the very end and it pissed me off. I was upset because um basically Mary called her a liar. She's like, girl, you are a liar. You know, you I just find that you just are not truthful. You're fake and you're kind of a liar. And she first mentioned the black eye situation. And then she also mentions a body false positivity thing. And child, when she said that, that's when Heather took that little string of the body positivity thing and ran with it and went to her whole entire issues with her body image. When she knows damn well, that was not what um, Mary was calling her out on. But because Mary has been criticized over the years about her talking about people's bodies mary you know kind of took a step back she was like because i think mary after she said it, she's like crap <laughs> this lady is going to try to deflect now but that's kind of where the episode ends though they um you could tell there's something brewing between heather and mary and mary i know she could do it i know i i have all the confidence in the world that Mary is going to get Heather together because Mary, ironically, we didn't know this when we were watching the show at the beginning, but Mary knew something that the rest of us didn't know until, well, last couple seasons, that Heather is fake as hell. And this is why Mary has truly never really saw it for Heather. I think Mary and her kooky weirdness and how she does things she does it in a way where it's kind of humorous and funny, but she be actually trying to tell us something all at the same time. You just got to sometimes read the tea leaves. Sometimes it's vain, but a lot of times it's truthful. Um, it's, it's that Libra energy because child, she's such a Libra and I love it. And <laughs> maybe that's the other reason why I get along with Mary because like, again, that's my polar opposite sign. I'm an Aries sun, but I'm actually a Libra moon. So I, I really do understand Libras. But anyway, um, Libra women, Libra men, ooh, they can be tricky. Sometimes they're devils, but sometimes they're fun. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. That does conclude the episode for today. Um, again, this, they're, they're doing this. They're doing it. They're doing it. They're doing it. Like it's, this is easily my favorite franchise. But anyway, Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.